Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Drunks and Dragons Random Encounters. I am not your dungeon master. <laughs> <laughs> that honor is reserved for Tandy. And with him is Tim Lenning. Hello! Jennifer Cheek. Hi! Michael DeMauro. Hello! And I'm Mike Bachman. And you sort of... Hi, everyone say hi to our good friend David Tondi on the forums from Dice Heroes. David, say hi. <laughs> How's it going, eh? <laughs> his full name is David Tondi on the forums. It's, it's very <laughs> weird. Long birth certificate. Or, uh, we decided I cut it a little short, because who has the time, <laughs> really? Not me. But, yeah. Guys, we're playing Shadowrun. It's happening. We're finally, finally doing Shadowrun! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that what we're here for? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, Bachman. <laughs> I thought this was Monopoly Week, yo. <laughs> I thought you just wanted to have a chat with me about business of podcasting and yeah. mm -hmm. living in Australia. Tell me mm -hmm. of your brand and, uh, and of Australia's brand. <laughs> I think Australia's brand is pretty good other than people being afraid of it for scary animals. And very strict video game laws. Oh, is this true? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. hmm. Tommy, yeah, why are you sound Canadian? Ah, oh, someone got it! <laughs> thank, thank you, Drifty, oh! thank you. I don't get it. Shame on you, Tim. I still don't get it. Tim. What, what happened? <laughs> he said he you sounded it. Canadian because of your, your, um, how you always say good day, mate. I get it! <laughs> good one. <laughs> good goof. Uh, see, the the goof is, nah, I don't know. That Please is explain me the goof. goof. It'll make it a lot funnier if you explain it to me. And she years old. I don't remember how it started. I so. was I was being facetious. I did not want to hear that explanation. <laughs> anyway, so, we're we're gonna play Shadow Shadow Run. Well, no, we're gonna play it. We're not gonna. How play do you it. Shadow Run? I don't know. That's what we're gonna find out in this episode, actually. So we guys we're, we yeah we don't know how to play Shadow Run. So we brought in Tondi, who uh, knows more things than we do, all the way from I, I assume beautiful Australia. Um, <laughs> What's the Australia shooting? like? Beautiful. Think... Yeah, beautiful. Lots of dangerous animals. <laughs> is it really tomorrow? It is. Today is Thursday. Wow. It's not, though. I it's really Wednesday. What, what happened last night that we missed? Is what I want to know. Um, I believe it was called the Rapture. Oh, no! no! Oh! Don't spoil it! Damn it. <laughs> I haven't finished Bioshock yet. Oh. <laughs> it's a uh, good goof. So Tandi also uh, he does his he does his own podcast called Dice Heroes, which you should check out. Well, how would people go about checking out your podcast? Yeah, check out uh, Dice Heroes uh, at www.diceheroes.com, or follow me on Twitter at Dice Heroes. Oh, you do that at the end. Oh, I'm already Jesus breaking Christ. rules. <laughs> follow me at the Mike Box. No, no, no! <laughs> stop! Stop! <laughs> well, that was the episode. Uh, Bye. There's one down, Dice you old suckers. <laughs> Idiots. Yeah. D Dice Heroes is an actual play podcast, um, similar to uh, the in D uh, Drunks and Dragons. Um, we play games such as uh, well Shadowrun and uh, World of Darkness, Fate Core, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and I um, whole a whole arrangement of different games. I've heard two. I've heard. Of two of those games, so I'm pretty. That's I have street awesome. cred too. Yeah, you got that that RPG street cred mm. for sure. I I go to uh, I know hobby games. shops. We mm -hmm. some more of the mainstream ones: uh, Star Wars, um, Edge of the Republic, Edge of the Empire. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, no, oh, yeah, you your shit cred is so up. bad. You're done fucked up. Leave. Tim just threw his headphones to the ground and walked away. <laughs> that's actually, that's actually I, I don't know if you guys have been keeping track, but that's actually his last strike, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. he's gone. No, he's, I'm he's pretty sure he's, he's stricken from the record. Oh, yeah, Tim has to actually go live in that in the garbage outside now. He has to go. Tim's going <laughs> to go and live time. under the ice. Full under time. the ice now. Yeah. Oh. That's where he has to stay. Which there's still so much of around Boston. It's so sad. You, you mean Drek? What? We were talking what? about ice now. You missed Fuck, it. I heard the word garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I did say garbage. I'm good at, I'm good at casting. All right. You guys want to get into this shit? I don't know. 
Yeah, let's, let's do it. Do it. Let's get into it. Um, okay, how many days? Oh, oh, and I'm I'm really excited because I think this is the first time you four are uh, players. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. That is true. Well, technically, I guess Durance we were all playing, but. Well, no, I wasn't a part of Durance. <gasps> you were at episode three. That... I was excluded. This is a you first... weren't excluded, were you? <laughs> I <laughs> know. <laughs> I remember, no, I think I remember you're logging gone. on one day and you guys were live streaming and I didn't know about it. And I was just like, oh, a little sad. No, that's not true. That I'm sure not. we that's, emailed no, you and you didn't respond to an ad- email. Oh, well. You couldn't make it to one thing and so we did another thing. And That's what it was. You were, oh, you were got... gone for the first episode. We're like, we have a story going. So. Oh, sorry. No, no, anyway, no. but this is the first time we have like all four of us been yeah. playing as player characters in like a more uh, traditional mm-hmm. RPG type right. of game yeah with a dm now well, jennifer thrifty and i have played together in the pax east we did yeah mm-hmm. we played two things together we played a D uh what is that this is new one uh, next next yeah. D next and then we played uh shadowrun so we're uh you know experts on it yeah um and thrifty and i have played battlefield together so we've got that we yeah. that you always yeah. have battlefield i feel like that applies battlefield at one time yeah I role played and, uh, as the healer. <laughs> my experience with Shadowrun is uh, I've played and done a little bit of GMing before, but this will probably be my most ambitious run, I guess. Right. You're you're explaining a little bit to us before we started recording. Can you go ahead and tell us what you're saying about the kind of the co-runners going back and forth? So what we are trying, what I will be trying to do with this. Uh, collaboration is um, you guys will be creating a Shadowrun team, the Dice Heroes will be creating a Shadowrun team and we'll both you'll both be running for the same doing the same job essentially um, parallel jobs possibly sharing infa- information mm-hmm. possibly uh, due to the times and things probably never actually meeting but maybe sending each other messages or Finding information like that. that could help. I love it. Um, it's like an ARG. That... Okay. What does that, that mean? Alternate reality game. Uh, okay. Well, it's not. It's more just like we're on the day shift and they're on the night shift, or vice versa. Mm. And so we don't really interact, but we pa- we cross paths after the other ones have been there. We yeah. We leave we we leave notes mm-hmm. for each other. And dead hey. drops. Dead hey, drops. I didn't get. I didn't get time to stock the shelves, so most, you do that. Most of time. most of that interaction stuff will happen naturally in the game, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will just give you one tip: uh, the dice heroes, other than me, are experienced Shadowrun guys, um, so they really know how to twink a character. So don't get in a fight with them. <laughs> that would be a bad idea for us. I'll yeah. take them. Because I feel that we all are extreme noobs. Yeah, and which drives me mad because I enjoy tr- attempting to twink out a, uh, how you say, uh, the Dungeons and Dragons character, but I have no idea how to do it in Shadowrun. Yeah. So. If you like that type of thing, if you like max maxing a character, you will love Shadowrun. Really? Tim, it's your best day ever. I feel the bit of the itch right right here in my heart zone, so I'm excited I, for I it. I think that like every time we start a new game and that new like, oh I get to create a new character is always so fun mm-hmm. and I get like super overwhelmed by possibilities, so I think it'll be interesting for us to kinda like talk it out and see who's gonna be what and yeah. what we're, our characters are gonna end up looking like. But this is really different than D and D. Like very different yeah. setup for the characters. Yeah. It only uses D sixes. What? Yeah, so this is a dot. It's completely different to D D and D. You're going from a really well organized game in D and D fourth to a really complicated. Um, yeah. I don't know how to like. There's rules for pretty much everything, um, but once you kind of get into the flow and do take a couple of hits, kill a couple of people, mm-hmm. um, that type of thing, you will you'll get the hang of it. 
So this is a really, really popular, famous game. So it's got to have some good aspects. Yeah, I feel like it's the second most popular role-playing game. I'm pulling that stat out of nowhere. Ooh. I feel like it's up there. I feel like Pathfinder. You're creating play enemies. A lot. Yeah. Pathfinder's probably up there. I feel too. like I hear uh, if people aren't playing D and D but they're doing RPGs, I hear Pathfinder. I hear Shadowrun a lot. Mm-hmm. So. Fate Core is really popular at the moment. I've heard you of Fate. You guys probably should. Yeah. yeah, you guys would like that. It's very story-driven. Mm. Yeah, we should look into that. Um, we should talk a little bit about what Shadowrun is, because I bet there's people out there listening to this, uh, maybe even in our chat room, who have no idea what it is. Yeah. Maybe even on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think Shadowrun is? What? Uh, Jennifer? Oh, well, um, from, from what I've played and what I've, I've looked at in the, um, the guide. What's what's the word I'm looking for? Is it the player's guide or is it just player's a guidebook? Guide? I don't know if cool. it's... Whatever it is. Cool rule book? So yeah. it's set in in a future where there's... It's very technology-driven, but also magic exists, uh, which is really interesting. Um, it seems like a very gritty world, from what I understand mm-hmm. of it, and... It seems maybe a little Blade Runner-y. Yeah. I can see that. And um, there's... It's not just humans, there's... Orcs, there's trolls, there's dwarves, there's elves. I think I so. those are the main ones. Yeah. Um, apparently, there's there are dragons that happen. Ba- You're apparently not supposed to trust them, is what people tell me. I, I, yeah, a few I times mean, already. Would you ever be like, there's a dragon? I'm for sure trust so that. So play a, can I crash well, your couch? Like, there's like dragons who like run corporations and stuff. Yeah. Are they actually yeah. dragons? Do they yeah. run yes. for office? Uh, I believe there was one that was elected for some sort of office, but then was killed or something. What's his name? Uh, Harold McDaniels. My understanding is that Native Americans in 2011 did some sort of weird Native American magic and then broke some sort of veil of whatever, whatever, and then that's what created all this stuff. They're like, revenge, fuckers! <laughs> <laughs> Take this, assholes! The... Oh. Well, I think we I was going to make a goof, and I decided it was probably not a good idea. <laughs> good decision. Proud of you. Um, I, we were sort of like in a uh, like a magic ace AG, like low low magic time, and then like it went back into magic, and so people were like always elves and dwarves oh. all along. But then, um, but then like it started coming out more uh, now that we went into this higher magic time because yeah, we're in the the sixth world, which happened two thousand twelve or whatever. Mm. Or December or whatever. So, the current, Shadowrun, Kato, current Shadowrun is set in, I think, 2075? Yes. Um, so, uh, in 75 years, this is a realistic look at the future, I'm assuming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll be there. Um, so, there's a lot of, like, cybernetics and junk. and Hackers. There's, like, a matrix. Um, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, so there's all sorts of, and I guess uh, the trade-off is like if you get cybernetic stuff stuck in you, then you lose your ability to do magic stuff mm. because yeah, it's like yeah. you're losing your humanity. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I was looking at something too, like your essence, where like the more because you, you can modify your body in a lot of ways, and like the more you modify yourself, the more you lose your the essence of yourself, which makes sense. Why do I feel? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 And there's also, and, like, um, prejudices out there, too. So uh, humans are still the most populous meta-human, and everyone else is kind of either, A, looked down upon, or those meta-humans look down upon humans, or they look down upon ma- magic users or cybernetic us- users. It just depends on, like, where you are. Yeah. Yeah. So none of the uh, racial inequity has been solved. In fact, it's probably gotten worse. And to add to that, um, a bunch of magical events happened. Like, I think the last one was Haley's Comet went close to the Earth or something. And uh, crazy shit just started happening to people. So you might have just suddenly got fur or spots or, you know, things other than being trolls or orcs or dwarves or elves. So people really are unique in Shadowrun in that sense. Is it set on, on like, a world, like, do the current continents as we know them exist, or is, like, totally different? Yeah, like, uh, you could I'm be in, like, sure. Seattle, right? Okay, I mean, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Like, 
cities that yes. we recognize are, are places we could be. But I think Canada like, and America are part of one group now. Right, and California is its own thing, and Denver is ruled by a dragon. <laughs> Why is Denver in like every like future? Because of the weed. Oh, the sweet, sweet weed. Like and the and the demon horse at the airport. Oh yeah, they have the weirdest airport. It probably is that demon horse. <laughs> I, yeah, it, actually. I, I'm back on board. I like Shadowrun again because the, the Denver <laughs> airport. <laughs> Thanks, Denver airport. Denver, yeah. So what else do we got? A oh, big corp, lots of big corporate stuff. Yeah, it's just you know what corporations—they're always getting at you. So it's just like one corporation trying to fuck over the little man with another. It's, what is this? Is it 2075 or is it 2011? I can't I wanna, tell. I want to play as the little man. <laughs> the littlest man. I want to be an actuary. <laughs> you don't even know what an actuary is, I bet. I don't know what that is either. But I, that's not the first time I've heard people say that. Um, it's like, the funniest reference. No one knows what it is. There is no one that's an actuary. <laughs> it's not a real thing. I actually know what an actuary is. It's like a is. census oh. data person. They do data. It's, there's data. No, they do uh, like analysis to see how dangerous stuff is. So like the actuary cool. will help you screw your employees over because yeah, you can get less insurance or whatever. Oh. Yeah! Anyway, back to corporations. What we were saying is this Damn. world. I mean, because it's a very corrupt, uh, gritty type of world, cor corporations are it's running America. a lot of things. And it sounds like these Shadowrun groups are often doing errands and tasks. Yeah, and sometimes you're for C Corporation A and doing a job against Corporation B. Where's the line? Who is good and who is bad? I, you tell me, Simpson. I don't know. Whatever's in your heart. Or maybe you're working for a gang. Or maybe you're working for... Uh... Maybe you're trying to steal a magic item from a dragon. Who knows? Gosh. Or your papa. And it seems like this is a world, too. Like, I, I've seen some interesting flavor about, like, food. And, that like, coffee. You can't get, like, well, you can get real coffee, but it's expensive. And, like, certain things don't exist anymore. So. Yeah. Also, so like, unless food. you're uh, rolling in the creds, pretty much all of your food is soy product. Oh, man, um, Flavored with chemicals and sugars and that type of thing. So everybody's just, like, real fit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. If that's, like, all you have, you're like, food is gross anyway. I don't even need that. <laughs> Depends on how much your body score is. Hmm, true. Guys, menopause is a breeze in this, uh, Wait, this what? world. <laughs> what? What's menopause? <laughs> Ladies who think menopause need a lot of soy. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 back Tell it up. Tell me I more, know pause. more <laughs> What? What are you saying right now? Threaty, is menopause gonna happen to me? Is menopause gonna happen to me? Guys, I'm going through menopause. Because <laughs> you're a man. Menopause. Yeah. Menopause is my. Yes. Uh oh. Menopause. Shadow on menopause is when you grow a third leg. Menopause oh. is my oh. gay furry group that I meet on every Tuesday. Guys, menopause is my homeboy. Can we, <laughs> what, what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so because uh, Shadowrun is a world that's basically run by corporations, there are um, like government groups and local government kind of law enforcement and stuff like that. But most every service is basically run by a corp. That includes your law, your um, healthcare, and it all costs money. So for example, um, there is a, there's something called. Uh, the um, dock wagon uh, court. So you pay a monthly fee, and if you get in trouble, they'll come in there and get you out. And uh, if you're paying enough, they'll probably do so uh, with armed guards. So it um, seems like a lot of the corporations are just big ass mafias. Pretty much. Um, the mafias also have a major um, influence on the world. Oh, so uh, mafias, and then your low level street gangs. And then uh, your mega corpse, and in between that, you've got your splattering of corrupt politicians uh, and other kind of service providers. Speaking of, someone's coming to get us right now. <laughs> Someone has finally <laughs> called the jail. We all have to go there for doing gonna... such a bad podcast. <laughs> Stop doing bad podcasts. You're getting arrested. <laughs> We've done so many of them, and we haven't been caught yet. I'm a, we're bad boys. I don't know. The <laughs> bad boys of podcasting. <laughs> You, you can't geek us now. We're all chromed up. I don't know. Oh, that's you know that, guys. That's a little taste of the slang from Shadowrun that apparently exists. Cause Tim won't stop using it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll put a call out to uh, anyone watching this. Find Shadowrun slang and just tweeted at Tim. Just just like nonstop. 
Yeah, just just well, shatter or just make up your own slang. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A shatter run gotta... slang contest. Yeah. Well, if you look at my Twitter timeline on March 19th, you'll see a picture I tweeted out where Thrifty says in a hilarious thing, and I forget what it was, but it made me <laughs> it roll on the so floor funny. laughing. About it was those, just, are the days. those are the days, March 19th. Oh, it Jennifer said, it. if that fragging Tusker doesn't buzz, I'm going to geek him with my chrome right in the hoop. Parentheses, that means butt. <laughs> <laughs> and then I say, wonderful. And he, then he says, I think you mean whiz. Oh boy! And then I said Guys, L semicolon I was L. A he was, <laughs> he was. I was laughing so hard I spelled L well wrong. How do you even do that? Well, so, um, I think just to not to make sure you've got the right uh, perception of shadow runners. Shadow runners are outside the law, so they don't. They might work for a corp through a proxy, through a proxy, through a proxy, uh-huh. but. Um, the corps actually have things like hitmen and strike teams to do official work. Mm. So shadow runners live outside the lines. Um, often right. uh, they don't have uh, what's called a sin, which is uh, what every real person has to identify them as a real person. Oh, really? And yeah, so very uh, minority report. Hmm. Um, every every it's just an identification has, number. A sin. Um, and that basically tracks everywhere you go. Interesting. And what you do and um, what you buy and things like that. And that, I'm assuming that's how the shadow runners are able to get around and do the dirty jobs because they're sinless. No one's keeping tabs on them. Oh, so, so I guess the Antichrist exists. And oh my everyone God. Has Nikolai the Carpathia, Nikolai man. Nikolai Carpathia. He doesn't sleep or use contractions. So. Uh, About three people so... got that joke. <laughs> I don't know. That's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> So most um, shadowrunners do are sit are sin less. I did not realize that. That's cool. Well, you can you can have a sin, but that basically means that you know all your information is in a database somewhere. Yeah, but so you get what's karma. The, what's the the benefit of having a sin? Like, are there things that we you can't do without one? Well, it's a it's oh, a, yeah. it's I a mean, trait. Oh, do that a sin, you still... can't do things like buy oh. products. Or, so you have to like you know, be completely uh, black market on everything. Got it. Yep, or you just get yourself a fake sin. Ah. Ooh. Yeah, right. and some of the pre-gen so, characters looking at... There's a lot of items in this game, it seems like. Yeah. And it seems like there everyone are. has, like, 50 yeah. of them. So I was looking... And when looking... we get we to the shopping section, there's a couple of things I point out because they usually say, have a look at the guns, and there's a million types of guns, and you get lost in that. But there's a couple of things you really need to be effective. Mm-hmm. So we'll hit those first. Good, good, good. Awesome. But it seems like you can get forged once. I was looking at one character, and he has, like, level four forged this, level four forged that. So it's like it'll pass mustard at most places, I guess, but I don't know. <laughs> because, uh, this, as you said, this is a gritty world, so if, like, you got scanned and had illegal weaponry on you, you probably would just get shot. So. Oh, so there's no, like, but... jury. It's like, oh, I'm a cop. Time to die. Or probably, like, a private something. Yeah, a private detective. Yeah. PI or something. So, uh, what are, like, what's legal and illegal? So, is it just, is it, Ill, is it illegal to not have a sin? Uh, yes, uh, well, hmm, don't they, like, it might don't just they, like, be not bad give them to trolls and stuff like that. I yeah, that. I don't, it's, it's not illegal, but if you don't have a sin, you're, like, you're trash. Hmm. So it's like a um, class thing, too. Yeah. And so, and there's a, then that some some people like some groups don't have them, maybe. Right, like I think like trolls usually don't even get them um, because they're just looked down upon um, as big, violent, awful monsters. Hmm. And it's because they're always nice troll. they're always trolling. They are. Like get off the internet. Who calls it a ruckus. Um, so a couple of character options for uh, your normals or your mundanes, um, uh, your skill or um, gun junkies, so people who are just focused on uh, like athletics or the physical body, mm-hmm. um, and maybe like pure charismatic faces, um, things like that. But the more, I think, the more interesting characters are when you talk about magic and technology. Ooh. Mm-hmm. So, you guys already touched a little bit on the magic, and yes, there's dragons, 
There's also other creatures called critters. Critters? Um, so, <laughs> like little um, bunnies? Like little bun buns? <laughs> yeah, little little uh, six foot bunnies with uh, fangs, things oh. like that. Oh so, my god, is there like a Beastmaster character? Not really, oh, I don't think. That would be great. You send bun buns to go attack oh your foes. That would um, be so awesome. Oh. If you like, like things ass. like that though, I might recommend a summoner because then you can summon spirits, which you can basically say they are whatever you want them to look yeah. like. Ooh. Jennifer talks Ooh. to ghosts in RL in Meat yeah. Space, um, and I hate it. Yeah, I keep inviting them to hang out on our new couch, and they love it. They I love mean, there's our, plenty of room, couch. but <laughs> not it's for me. It's very cold in here with all the ghosts, though. I have seen the Sixth Sense. They, well, the problem is they get under the couch, and then they won't leave. So. <laughs> I honestly don't know if this is a goof right now. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Tim, Tim uh, is scared. He's very scared. No, I actually am scared of ghosts also in RL. Then maybe you shouldn't invite them to sit on your know. couch. I really regret it. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so, uh, Tell us about magic technology. So, Tony, this is what happens um, when this group gets together. Uh, they just go off on a random direction, and then... As the GM, you get to try to corral them back. Uh, and I'm and glad you're looking you forward to be a part of that. Also, a practice also, also known as railroading. <laughs> like, God damn it, 50, I'm going to suck this dragon's dick. <laughs> but I wanted to invite these, these ghosts into my house and I'm going to do it. Stop railroading me, I kill myself. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Why don't I get the magic device that kills all my enemies? <laughs> I said it. I said it. Okay, we're doing we're doing it again. <laughs> we need to stop. Okay, so um, so when you think about creatures in the world, um, basically think about all the common animals. Probably anything that you could harvest for meat is rare because meat is something that you can eat that isn't soy. <laughs> um, but one of the common things to try and get you in the right mindset is a common practice for security is to have like a cockatrice oh. as a security guard or part of the security detail That's awesome. so that is a giant rooster lizard bird thing that can turn you to stone i believe yeah that's how it is back is in the day yeah. all right so so you kind of put in a spattering of D, &D creatures into your world mm -hmm. um now there's magic in the world so there's this place called the astral plane mm -hmm. and that's basically a uh, mirror of the world, kind of like how in D and D you got the Feywilds. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But that's where all the magic kind of lives, and on there there are spirits, and spirits uh, can be called forth onto the physical plane to wreak havoc, I guess. Um, so in your lifetime, you've probably well, as a non shadow runner, in your lifetime you've probably seen spirits and critters. And maybe even a dragon or two just flying from skyscraper to skyscraper kind of thing. Jesus. Um, concrete jungle uh, world. Um, most of the time there are wilds and stuff, but there's bad things out there. You're mostly just like kind uh, of rolling through a Robocop version of Detroit, right? Or like Thrifty said earlier, uh, a Blade Runner mega city. So a sprawl, yeah. if you will. Mm. Troll, yeah. Um, so on your magic side of things, you have a couple of different options. The ones that uh, you guys are probably interested in are your sorcerers, who mm -hmm. can manifest magic into things like fireballs or um, change the look of someone to look like someone else Ooh. or uh, control someone's mind. Um, summoners, who can summon... Um, spirits into the physical realm and then ask those spirits to do things for them. Um, often or to you, them. you can like <laughs> yeah. do a little bit of both <laughs> of that. Um, with the summoning it's like a contract so you, you can ask them to do one thing or depending on how well you summon multiple things. Interesting. So if that you sounds wasted... a lot like Junpei. Yeah. Jiu dude where are you? Come out! <laughs> Um, and there's adepts, so adepts take the magic and kind of feed it back into their body to enhance their body. So um, you could be, I'm, no, I'm not sure if it look, uh, has to affect your physical appearance, but you could be a really weedy person and be a physical adept that can jump up three floors 
So you'd be like, cool. hey, man, I look, I'm mild man- manner Clark Kent, but you step to me, I'm going to punch you and turn you into jelly. Mm. Or have hands that can kind of generate energy to kill. Um, but the adepts usually uh, are skill-based, so, like, adepts will pick a, like, I'm going to be a gunslinger adept, okay. and I'm going to focus yeah. on the skills to do with uh, wielding weaponry. Um, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, then we got. How are magic yep. users viewed in this world? Are they like treated with suspicion? Or are people like think it's normal? There's enough magic in there that um, it's probably on par with the racism for being okay. a different race. Mm-hmm. So there is definitely things in place to kind of record everyone that has magical ability. Mm-hmm. Um, that has to do with that whole sin system as right. well. So right. Can I keep track of the, who's got what powers? And... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when it first appeared, it was definitely something people were scared of, but 70 years down the line, it's a little bit more commonplace. But still, the fact that you could kill someone without a weapon yeah. from across the room, people are scared of that. And is there ways, like, you, you, you're a uh, uh, some sort of magic person, you walk up to a guard... Do they have ways of figuring out if you're a magic user? Do they have like a... Other than the sin? Like breathe into um, this thing. Usually uh, like other magicians can detect or I believe that it's called astral perception. So you can see that they have a okay. magical aura. But I'm not sure if a mundane can do it, if mm. they have to have magical um, a gift. Yeah, like I was reading something where it's like you just can't see it. Only other magic users can see it, so it's like you can take penalties to it where you get to be spotted earlier, but maybe you're stronger. So I thought that was really an interesting kind of power play between I'm a crazy good mage, but everyone knows it, or I'm a decent mage and no one knows it. Yeah. One of the giveaways is mages often don't have any cyber tech. Um, so if they're a clean person, they might be a mage. Uh, so... That's a good segue into the technology side of things. Yeah. So, first of all, no hoverboards, unfortunately. No! Oh, I'm out. Oh. Cruel world! <laughs> um, I'm actually not sure if that's true, but... I <laughs> no, actually, I have seen one. There are hoverboards. Rejoice. Yay, back in! We're in. Um, so, we, uh, the technology level is extremely high, but... Not to the point where you've got um, robots that could pass as humans. Okay. okay. That's good. Not to the point where weaponry is laser-based. What about to the point of robots that attempt to pass as humans? <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> you like my sprockets? I, I'm totally a real boy. <laughs> now, on the reverse side of that... You can basically tech yourself up so much that someone might mistake you for a robot. Wow. But right, don't, don't, people don't like people with a lot of like too many implants and stuff, right? Don't they get kind of some people, some people. Well, so, like, so what else are you gonna do with all those implants other than cause a ruckus? It seems like like. Like you, you have laser like, beam eyes. There's yeah, no like, good use for that. I don't like it. Yeah, it seems like they're, so you'd be some scared some common cyberware that most people will have will be a data jack, so they can connect directly to devices. Oh, like a USB um, on your pinky, like, like boop no, up. Like yep. a um, a com that's directly implanted into your head, so you have got your phone in your brain, kind of thing. Interesting. Never I, as it. often um, as you have to upgrade your phone, I just don't see that as being. Good <laughs> <idea>. <laughs> it's just a little bit of surgery. Oh, that's not bad. Um, <laughs> but on your side of things, uh, you'll definitely see things like um, robotic arms, robotic legs, uh, uh, weaponry coming from those things. Uh, a lot of it's about enhancing the human body as well. So, Interesting. Um, there is also with the things that are completely visible, there's bioware, which is basically the art of improving organs and then putting them back into you. Uh, so you might get a super strong liver to chug beers. Yeah, yeah. be so cool at parties. Deal with your alcoholism. Yeah. Or you might get um, customized pheromones, so 
the opposite sex is really attracted to you. I'm going to get that. I want them. Can I have that? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Can I have it? Can I have two? I want two of those. I want double pheromones, please. Can I have your pheromones? Can, Can I, I have them? I want pheromones no. to attract every sex and especially trolls. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, a really common thing to see is drones. So mm-hmm. drones are robots of small or high size. So whizzing through the air, you'd always see drones hanging around. Mundane like, tasks, like Amazon logos on the side, or <laughs> hella Amazon logos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice. Uh, I'm not sh- I'm not sure who Amazon belongs to in this world. It might be the Dragon Run Aztec company. Oh God, <laughs> I knew it. Isn't it actually like uh, like Amazonia or something? Isn't that like a yeah. thing? I think that's one of the corps. We did it. <laughs> we have everyone's address. Sweet. Um, so as well as your smaller drones, you'd also see drones up to and maybe bigger than human size, mm-hmm. uh, used for security, used for um, your more high-end stuff. They are expensive, okay. but it is a common thing to see. Have they like replaced the workforce? Like, Are they the guys uh, making no, toothpaste and stuff? The... Um, Workforce is cheaper if it's flesh, basically. Oh, really? Oh, because the, the yeah. drones are so expensive, probably, to, like, keep and maintain and buy. Yeah. yeah. Also, the uh, corpse could just, you know, threaten to take your sin or something like that. Yeah, and so they're like, okay, I'll We own you. Yeah. Pretty much. If you're a corpse man, you're owned by that corp. Mm. And that's bad. Yeah. Sounds bad. You're a wage slave. Oh, man. Um, the other big thing is the Matrix, which is their intra- internet. So there's a couple of aspects to the Matrix. Um, it's actually a bit hard to imagine in my head, but there's um, augmented reality, which means uh, if you've like look through your com, or if you've got some decked out glasses, mm-hmm. uh, you're basically seeing a heads up display on everything. Uh, you can interact with it, tag things. Um, if you're interacting with uh, objects, all of the stats and that type of thing are up on there. So um, walking through uh, a street, everybody has taken uh, advantage of that. So. If you are not in AR, you've probably got a really dull view of the world. But if you are in AR, you've got information, advertising, pop-up ads. And so that's like, of... in f- you see it as in front of you, but people don't see it in front of you, right? Yeah, like you yeah. only see it if you've got like, you know, whatever the Google Glass. Yeah, and those are like on our eyeballs, right? Like, mm. and, and most people so have So kind those. of like well, the Terminator scan. Mm. So, All right. Like the, uh, you know, if you're wearing, like, the the 14th Oculus Rift dev kit, because in this world, that's still going to come out. Yeah. Still in beta. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> now, uh, the, the version up from that is virtual reality, and that's when you drop out of the physical world into the Matrix very much like... Well, not actually very much like the Matrix movies because the Matrix is basically a set of systems or a big grid. It sounds like Neuromancer, you... like a lot like Neuromancer. Or like Matrix, the movie that. Matrix. Well, he was saying it's not exactly like it. Mm. So it's not like a physical world. It's a grid yeah. with nodes, and those nodes could be represented by different things. And when so, you go there... This is what it's like in Neuromancer. More like Tron. <laughs> Um, and like, for example, if you want to... <laughs> well, it, it, I, I don't know what they do in Tron other than race. <laughs> they, so if... they have light disc battles. They have disc. They have disc. Yeah, they play frisbee. Yeah. Um, so I th- that's actually probably a good description to picture it. But there's kind of these doorways into um, basically their equivalent of a website. And once you go in there, it's kind of a different set of rules. Uh-huh. And in there, it could look like a video game or it could look like a movie. So the Matrix is actually a way to get around to these things, these other experiences and other services. Okay. Sweet. And the VR is and more basi- lifelike, right? 
Say again, sorry. Is the VR more lifelike? Well, this is the VR we're talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So, uh, the VR can be completely sensory. So, if you're in hot sim, it's called. Um, you're experiencing it as if it was real life. Okay. But if you're in cold sim, it's kind of like you can see it and it might smell funny. <laughs> this is weird. This isn't quite right. It's not what air smells like. Uh, so, a Google search, like the equivalent of the way I see it, and this is like, like the last chapter on the Matrix is kind of like... Um, but... The way I see it is, if you, in this time, uh, to do a Google search, I jump onto a computer, type in Google. In Shadowrun time, you jump into VR, and you kind of propel, propel yourself to the node, or you do a search, and you propel yourself to that. If you're not in VR, you're doing it via a screen, but mm -hmm. if, instead of like a Google search, it's kind of like a 3D thing. <laughs> um, but if you're not in VR, why are you doing it kind of thing? You're doing exactly. it like, like it, it's common to jump into VR to do web searching and that type of thing. Huh. What isn't common is hacking into those types of things. That sounds illegal to um, me. That's the realm of deckers. Okay. Um, so your deckers jump into the VR and uh, basically do things that you're not allowed to do, like take control of other people's devices, take control of other people's sites. Uh, break other people's stuff. Um, so, like, if I dog. roll up to a, a house and I'm like, I want to get in this house, I'm going to hack your door, and then I'm going to hack, like, your robot so that you don't attack me because we live in a cyber world of technology everywhere. It's hell and great. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and the Deckers have, like, a device to do this, right? Like, they do this, yeah, like, through technology. Yeah, a deck, in fact. Oh, I deckers. Okay. That's and they can also uh, get, like, I think the full name is right? Cyber Deck, but yeah. Deck. Yeah. Sorry? They can get, like, beat up when they're in VR, too, right? Like. Yeah, you can get uh, dumped. Uh, so if you're in Hot Sim, say, basically anything that happens to you in there has a potential to damage you. Oh, um, Jesus. So it isn't a safe place if you're breaking the rules, and they've got these Overwatch systems which will come down on you, and they're called gods and demigods, hmm. and they will come down on you very hard. Um, I think normal protocol for the big fellas is to lock you in so you can't get out. Oh, so you're like stuck then, in there. <laughs> and, and then basically hurt you until you're dead. Jesus, oh. so you're, like you're trapped in cyberspace and they just murder you. That sounds terrible. So what you've got to think about is information is one of the most valuable things in this so all information is probably on the matrix somewhere uh, the protections are really high um, the other thing to be aware of with the matrix is pretty much every single thing that you could think of is probably connected unless you specifically don't want it connected Interesting. so consider everything wirelessly connected to the matrix so like how people um, right now are starting to get their thermostats connected to the net. Pfft, now it's yeah, like light bulbs. You know, it's everywhere. Definitely. So one of um, a good example of uh, a common everyday thing is a guy's driving home from work, puts his car on autopilot, goes into VR, travels to his house node, turns on the oven, starts the cooking hmm. process, all while sitting in his car. So huh. when you're in VR, you are essentially unconscious in the real world, by the way. Huh. That's no good. So be careful where you do it. Yeah, because if you're, it's like someone needs to be like watching out for your actual body, wherever you are. Mm. So how yeah. do you actually play this this dang old game of? Wait, of, there was one more thing, I think that was important. Cybermancers. Um, so, cybermancers are basically deckers that don't need any equipment. So they magically can go into the matrix and create and hack programs without any uh, deck or anything like that. Mm. Uh, I feel like they're deck really is interesting software. to me. Like, because it's, it's like this technology thing, but it's not done through technology. Yeah, they're definitely someone who people are still unsure of. They're quite a new thing. Yeah. So people are pretty scared of those um, 
that race or that class of character. <laughs> the the other um, characters though, uh, to be aware of for the technological sort, technological side of things are riggers, and riggers are basically deckers who instead of using like the matrix, they just hop into drones. So everyone can control a drone, or like mm-hmm. if you buy a drone, you can say go do my lawn mowing for me. But if you're a um, rigger, uh-huh. you've got a special device that lets you jump into your drone and you feel you are the drone, essentially. Huh. And in that case, it. if the drone... Yeah, you're piling it from within. So you see, you hear, you kind of... You are the drone. I like that. But if the drone takes damage, odds are you're going to get dumped and you'll take damage. Oh, uh, so it hurts when the dr- the actual robot friend of yours dies. I get that. Ugh. Um, and then there's always your uh, cyber samurais, who are the people who have augmented their bodies so they are really kick-ass fighters, and usually that's that's the main reason to augment, augment yourself. Okay. Make yourself a strong cyber warrior. Yeah. I wish I could. <sighs> Hell. Mm. So can, hopefully can, that's, that's given you guys a little bit of an idea of the world. Yeah, I think that's a good overview mm-hmm. of, of like world building, general atmosphere type things. Just what the heck we're getting ourselves yeah, into. Yeah, exactly. Right. Now, um, for for the playing the game, we're not going to cover this in huge detail because the way Shadowrun works is uh, there's different rules depending on your character, depending on... Uh, the situation, depending on what mm-hmm. you want to do. For example, you mentioned the Cybermancers. Mm-hmm. They have completely different rules than Deckers. Wow. So maybe like so, maybe it would be better to do this section at, at, like compare it to like a and d Like, what are the main yeah. differences between D and D and Shadowrun? Okay. I, mean, I know so, the dice are different. That's a big thing. Right. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Less less sides. Yeah, there's <laughs> approximately less 14 sides. less sides, if yeah. I'm doing math correct. Right, so the idea is you have, like, skills and abilities, right? Am I getting that right? And then you get a pool of <laughs> dice based on the, your, like, you know, your dex, your uh, strength plus your ability to, I don't know, whatever. Uh, so the general, a... the, the basic mechanic is um, a pool of D6s. Mm-hmm. Right. And the most common way to acquire that pool is by an attribute and a skill, but that's not always the case. But you are always trying to work out how many D6s do I need to roll to try and succeed with hits, which are fives and sixes, mm-hmm. um, to meet a threshold usually. Okay. So you're not trying to like you're not like rolling and then counting like every dice up. You're seeing how many yeah. dice are a five or a six. It's right. binary. Are, so, and then how many are ones, right? Because if you get a certain number of ones, then you get a glitch. Yes. So I'm not sure how you guys play in um, D and D, but uh, I play. If you roll a one on a D twenty in D and D, it's a fumble and something terrible happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. We auto- do automatic misses. Yeah. So. Um, so, Shadowrun, if you roll a high, uh, more than 50% ones on your pool, mm-hmm. that is a glitch. And if you didn't get any successes, that is a critical glitch. Oh. And bad things happen. Oh, boy. And isn't that it a lot bust. easier to die in Shadowrun than in, like, your... Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like, it, like, when bad... Bad things happen means like maybe you die <laughs> from your clear to, your critical glitch. Um, but uh, critical glitch might be your weapon is scrapped. Mm-hmm. It's depending on the. I mean, if it's really bad, the grenade might blow up in your hand, but you'd always get a chance to resist that damage. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I squeezed really hard uh, to counteract the experience. I held it away from my face from my pappy told me to. And then maybe he just buy a robot hand, huh? Huh? Yeah. New hand. Yeah, that's actually, uh, you know, it could, could work out for you. Win-win. That's someone's backstory right there. <laughs> yeah. uh, so there's, there's three types of tests. A success test with a threshold. So I'll tell you, well, you'll have to try and get above a number. I'm not sure if I'll tell you or if it's <laughs> a secret. Um, and a pose test where you'll be rolling against someone else who's rolling and you'll want to get more successes than them. And an extended test, which is the same as a success test, but it's 
Like you need to reach that threshold and every time you roll, it's a certain time span. Mm. So it might take you three hours to find a piece of information mm. because you had to roll three times. And then we're running out of soy-based nutrients. Yeah. Dang. That's not right. Or you could be now, like fixing a car and you could like come back to it like a week later and try, you know, and do a little bit more work on it kind of thing, right? Yeah. I think that's all something like that. Now, with that, that's not going to come up so much in our game because it's going to be a bit of a one-night thing, I believe. Ooh! Um, <laughs> but your average pools are going to be, depending on your twinkiness, between... <laughs> depending on your level of cream filling. I'm going to say <laughs> 6 and 15. Okay. So glitching's glitching's actually quite hard to do, I reckon. Okay. Um, you have a lot of ones. I yeah. mean, I'll probably do I mean, it like the first time. Yeah, I play. do it. <laughs> you know, you know, actually, on my dice, I've looked, I've done some research. Every single one of my dice has a one on it. So it oh, Christ, Bachman, why did you not I'll tweak just better? Them off. Yeah, it will I be. Should, I should have tweaked my dice. My dice. It will be interesting to see how Jennifer rolls oh, with boy. more dice. Uh, yeah, maybe she'll be amazing with yeah. these six, and like Tim will be awful. Do not get your hopes up. Just don't. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I have. Oh. I know. I, man, that was a mistake. I you messed up. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> now, just to make things a little bit more um, complicated, um, because Shadowrun is kind of a Twinkers game, oh, God. and people started going crazy and rolling 20 dice and things like that. <laughs> a, a new thing that's been added is limits. So a limit is the maximum number success of successes you can get on that roll. Uh, so you might roll 15, but if your limit is 3, it doesn't oh. matter that, that you got 10 successes. Sad. It only counts as 3. Yeah, so and like if you buy a shitty shotgun, it's like, yeah, I mean, you rolled dope, but it's a shitty <laughs> shotgun. It's only going to do 3. Whatever. Yeah, but what if I want to edge? <laughs> now... <laughs> Be careful with edging. It's not safe. What if I want to limit break by edging? <laughs> uh, well, what if you do want to do that, Thrifty? <laughs> Tell me more! Uh, you can actually do that. Uh, there's this st stuff called edge, which is like luck. And uh, and you can use it. And and then you can use more more dice than your limit. Now, see, where I come from, edging is something completely different. Yeah, that's so what I was, I was thinking just then. Um... <laughs> Well, Bachman, so, I guess high five to you because we're dirty people here. <laughs> and then a five. <laughs> edge, edge is kind of like your action point in D and D. Oh, Helps okay. you break the rules a bit, so you can use edge to make your sixes explode. <laughs> um, Sorry. Which means you re-roll. <laughs> so far, still the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you you get much better, like. Fuck these guys. I want more better dicers. I like that. Right, you like reroll stuff. Reroll right? things like that. You can also burn it to not die horribly. <laughs> so burning edge means you lose that edge completely because it's a it's a pool that regens at some stage. I'm not mm -hmm. too sure when. Um, but if you burn it, you say I'm gonna you know I'm gonna go from three edge to two edge oh, wow. and not die here. So, kind of like whenever I make brownies, I always tend to burn the edge. What? So, it's like that. Bogman! <laughs> Get in the trash can. Waka, waka, waka. <laughs> Get right inside of it. <laughs> you know, they have those yeah. brownie pans that ha they're like 80% edges. You know, because people like the edges. Oh, God. Ah. <laughs> monster. I want brownies. Now guess what? I'm not I'm not even finished about the pools yet. Because oh, once you once you've once you've got your pool, you need to consider your mods. So the last thing you want to do in this game is roll before you consider the mods because I'll penalize you. Oh no. Uh oh. Wait, what are mods? So the mods <laughs> are bonus or uh negative dice to your pool. So your average shooting pool might be 10 dice, mm -hmm. but because it's dark, you might have to mm. take two dice away from that okay. before you roll. Uh. Um, <laughs> or because uh, everybody's, uh, because they're lit up by some neon shirt, you might get two bonus dice to attack that person. Okay. So don't buy a neon shirt, Jennifer. <laughs> what? <laughs> I want it. Um, so... <laughs> There's mods in pretty much 
everything. You got to consider environment. You got to consider uh, condition modifier. That's my, mainly on my end. But just to be safe, grab your default pool and then just say, you know, what do I? Like, you know, let's discuss mods on. right now. So just yeah. like go ahead and get used to like before you roll, like figure out your mods first and then you roll. Yeah. Yeah. It's like help baby so, figure it out. I'm pretty uh, mean as a DM, oh, so no. if you roll r roll before mods, it's a glitch. Ah. Oh, oh boy, this is going to be a problem ah. for so me, say, I can already tell. <laughs> I'm going to roll, what are my mods? Yeah. Um, attributes of skills and skills are very similar to D&D, &D. the only difference is there's more, <laughs> a lot more. Yeah. Okay. And, more and they're really, really detailed as well. Um, Good boy. And then there's initiative, which is completely different to D and D. Huh. So, initiative in this game is really important because initiative will determine if you act once or maybe three times. Oh. In the I saw same that. Of time as someone acts once. That oh. seems like a really good system, because like in D and D, so far, Tom Darkblade was very difficult to play because it's like. I'm not flanking, so I suck. But in Shadowrun, each time you go, each round of the, the horn, mm -hmm. you subtract 10 from your initiative. So if your mm -hmm. initiative is like 31, you go three times, whereas everyone else goes once or twice. Wow. Yeah. So if like you, you so, spec in the speed, then very nice. Yeah. Yeah, so if you, if you, you want to try... <laughs> A lot of people think that this initiative system is a bit broken because, <laughs> you know, my wizard only gets to act once and my cyber samurai is acting three times. And that basically means they can shoot three times. Wow. Whereas that person only shot once. But you have to keep that in mind, I guess, when you're building your character, like what's most important to you. Definitely. To to yeah, and if you only um, shoot once, it needs to be a big-ass shot, I guess. Yeah. yeah, so just keep that in mind. Also, with the movement, you don't move three times in there. You move once, and then you say, okay, in the first, you'd be here. In the second stage, you'd be here. So it doesn't affect movement, so you're not whipping around mm. the uh, battlefield. It's just three actions within that movement. Mm. So if you say, like, I'm running forward, each time around, you're another handful of feet forward, right? Yeah. And most of that we're probably just going to average out because I am bad at distances and stuff. <laughs> it's like when yeah. you step on ice in a Zelda game. You just you just go full. Is is there any? I mean, is there like a battle grid? I mean, do you use miniatures? No. Kind of... Well, uh, you could, but it's all basically done by meters. Okay. So you can move a certain amount of meters. Mm -hmm. So like you would just... start out and be like, "Your these guys are a hundred meters away" or something like that. Yeah. So you'll say, I want to move, I can move this many meters, and I'll say, okay, you can get to there. And then someone behind you will say, I want to move this many meters, and I'll say, oh, you can get to there, which will be different, and then you'll argue about it. And <laughs> I, you I mean, technically the grid in D&D &D, does have, like, a specific, it's like five feet. Five feet. Five yeah, feet per five block. Feet, yeah. So it, it, this just seems like it's just kind of getting out of the grid way of looking at D and D&D also doesn't have high range weapons, though. Like, like really high, yeah. How yeah. far can those so, things shoot? I don't know. <laughs> Damn, that's that's far. That's real far. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but for example, a wizard's range is his line of sight. So. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. How how far can you see? Shit, yeah. on a clear day on top of a mountaintop. Hell, when I'm hiking, I get up to three and a half miles. <laughs> Yeah, so if you see in the shadow run, if you see a dude on a high place just looking at people, I'd just mm -hmm. run. Yeah. I love the idea of like a wizard like being on top of a building like, hmm, who am I gonna fuck up right Dude, now? Dude, binoculars <laughs> work in this world. Can wizards get up on a top of a house and say, I see you? No. <laughs> well, they can if they can see them, but... Yeah. This is where things get a bit hard for wizards. Basically, the rule is if the light can touch the person and then your eye... You're kosher. But if it's going through something like glass, oh, not shit. so much. Oh, okay. uh, so, for some reason, mirrors work and optical fibers work, but you're wearing some spectacles and you're fucked. So oh, it's, like no. the, it's like the Lion King. Well, no, actually, Everything that's, that's wrong. No, sorry, light goes 
light light goes through glass. So. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 used, it used to be it used to be that the glasses that people wore were basically little monitors. Oh. So it was a, like a wizard can't look at a camera feed and cast a spell on a person. That makes sense. Right. Yeah, that and, makes uh, sense. If you're a wizard, I'm sure you'll find the headache that is targeting. Hmm. Like you can't see them. Like yes, I right. fucking can. Like no, you can't. Like. Damn it. <laughs> health, health. Okay, so there's two health, physical and stun. Mm -hmm. It's much smaller than D&D. So you've got to have like 12 boxes of health. Oh. And a weapon potentially could do nine of those boxes. <gasps> Yikes. I don't like that. <laughs> that means we can die. Mm. It's, it's scary. Um, if your stun boxes get filled, you're unconscious. If your physical uh, boxes get uh, filled, you're dead. Um, they can overflow. And stun boxes, it only takes a little bit of time to clear them out. But physical ones, you're going to need some healing. The quickest healing in this game is magical healing. Ooh. So we need a healer. Um, you, you don't need to focus. Be quiet, bro. You don't need to focus um, on like healing if you're a magician. You could just take one healing spell and be done with it. Okay, so as long as there's like a magician around in our group, then. Or you can go find a street mage that can do it for you. Help me, yeah. street mage. I'm hurt. Please help my friend who is is almost dead. I was hit upon the back and buttocks with a bat. <laughs> now, <laughs> sorry that I've been rambling about real estate. The how to survive in combat. These are some things you just need to keep in mind. Because if you don't, you might die really quickly. Oh, Jesus. Um, when someone attacks you, most of the time you're going to roll reaction and intuition mm -hmm. to defend. That determines if they attack. Ooh. Oh. Hello? Oh, you still got you? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I just a, a, a plane flew past. Oh. <laughs> the airport's right behind the ducks. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so we have ducks and airplanes. I, I like to imagine that that's how you give people instructions on how to get to the airport. I just flew the ducks. And <laughs> it's just, it was right behind the ducks. <laughs> um, so those two attributes, and the attributes, um, are something to keep in mind. If they're low, there's a high chance you're going to be hit. So now, your, your reaction and in initiative, or was it? Yeah, or uh, intuition. Intuition, I think. Yeah. Um, your, if you are hit, you've got a chance to reduce the damage. You do that with the body attribute mm -hmm. and your armor. Mm -hmm. So your body, okay. that, well, first of all, first piece of advice, buy the best armor you can. Okay. That's done. going to suit. Obviously, if you're walking around in a chainmail suit, you're probably not going to be allowed a lot of places. <laughs> Um, and body is something that you probably don't want to use as a dump stat. Because then you'll just die. <laughs> then there's a chance, like, you, you could focus on one and not the other and mm -hmm. just not be hit. Yeah. But if you that. are hit... Then you're screwed. Yeah. Um, your agility is also what you probably use most for attacking. So both so with, like, the, guns and swords and stuffs. Most of the time, yeah. All guns, definitely. I'm not sure if there are some melee weapons that use strength, but I think for the actual attack, it is um, agility pretty much all the time. Uh, there are, like, complicated weapons. So if you're using a missile launcher, I think you actually use logic because you've got to understand <laughs> the weapon. Right. Like, this is weird. <laughs> Or I was thinking like the drones so too. Like if you're doing like intelligence. if you're like doing an attack with a drone, what would that be? Like would that be a drone? Yeah, so so your magic and your decking, you'd need different higher attributes. Um, okay. but if you're like that is to do the control side of things. If your drone's attacking by itself, then it's got its own set of rules. Mm. If you jump into the drone, you kind of take over and use your stats. Mm. So the attributes are kind of hard to um, balance. Also, not everyone's going to have the same amount of points in attributes. 
<laughs> Interesting. Because it depends on your race, too, right? Like priority table and yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah, which we'll talk uh, about next, next episode. episode. Yeah, so is there Any anything questions? else about the... I mean, I have a 25,000 questions, I but guess. But I feel like this is a good start for things to consider if you know, if you want to play at home, people who are listening. Um, mm-hmm. it, it is... I mean, this is a much more complicated yeah. game. Yeah, it seems D&D. like you have, to have, you have to know a lot more before you can just jump right in. But there are also a lot of resources online. Yeah, too. on the Matrix. On the Matrix, yes. Well, there's their forums, and I, I was looking at stuff this afternoon. There's even there's a Quick Start. If you look up Shadowrun Quick Start, um, you'll find a PDF that's like much shorter than yeah. the handbook that kind of does a quick and dirty des- description. Yeah, it still is confusing. I'm not gonna lie, but it's it is it's at least like a streamlined. Like this is the basics of what you need to know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going through character gen. If you want to give it a go, there are pre gens in that Quick Start where you can just grab them and go. To get try to get used to playing. Like they have like a um, like an encounter in that quick start. You fight inside some sort of fast food restaurant. Yeah, it's called Food Fight. Yes. Looks it's awesome. Stuffer Shack. Uh, oh, actually no. Yeah, Food Fight is actually a um, like an example fight or example little encounter that they put in each edition, I believe. Oh really? So that's funny. Yeah, because they call the... it Food Fight 5.0. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. But yeah, I found um, it but... helpful just to like look through the player handbook at like some of the character sheets to kind of get an idea of like what your options are and mm-hmm. um, yeah. and they give you like hot tips on the side yeah like, this is what this means you know focus on this so once you've built a character they like the pre-gens don't cut it anymore oh really shit yeah because mm-hmm. you're like going through the skill and like ah, that, why did they make that decision this is stupid <laughs> it's like when the uh character creator for dungeons and dragons just picks some random thing like i would never serve bahamut why would you say this about or like it'll give you like bad there's like, yeah the re- a lot of the recommended skills are really terrible that's stupid so yeah so i guess like once you like have like a general idea just start playing around with things just and... fuck around you know yeah, shit man. now even though a lot of this has been focused on like rules and mm-hmm. That type of thing. I'm always about story and character. So, okay. um, always consider your RP first. That's just general yeah. good RP role playing advice. Like, always consider your character and what you want to, you know, if you want to build a lame character that's got magic tattoos and is a real douche. <laughs> if you want that, embrace it. <laughs> oh, <Wow>. no. <laughs> Tit him. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get in the garbage. <laughs> He's back. He just, he's so upset now. Um, I do think I think it's really easy to fall into the trap of like I have to min max my character and make it super awesome. But really, what you yeah, should be, it is. <laughs> but what you really should be focusing on is like what makes my character interesting. Like tattoos. No, that I mean, tattoos is like if you're like, I want to be a dwarf with tattoos. How do I make this cool? That is, a, that is a great, that is a great little snippet that can build your character. And that's how I suggest you guys start kind of thing. Kind of what do you really want to be? You know, out of all the things we've talked about, what interests you the most and build from yeah. that? Right. Yeah. I think well, looking through the different characters, there's a good see what like strikes you, what looks interesting to you. And, those and bunnies we that. mentioned sound pretty. I cool. want to be a bunny anyway. <laughs> so between the week, uh, the week between this episode and next episode, we'll think a lot about um, <laughs> what you. we want our characters to be and uh, for what RP reasons. Uh, thank you all for joining and us. We'll make sure to come back to the exact same park. Good. <laughs> Yeah. Please wear the it. same thing. I'll that would be weird. If, if, if you don't have the exact same angle of that same tree, I will get upset. Yep. <laughs> and Bachman, you have a really good anime ass uh, light source coming down on you right now. Do you see it? You like it? I love it. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. my, it's my it's the glint off my laser beam sword. I'm actually in space <laughs> right now. If you had glasses on, you'd have that like shiny glasses thing. Happening. You'd be the bad guy. <laughs> what does she want? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Tandy, thank you so much for helping us with this. Um, I, we, we seem to have come to the right place because yeah. I think we'd be doomed otherwise. Can you imagine us four like, trying to figure this out? Like, what are we uh, doing? <laughs> well, Tim was going to do it. Remember Tim was going to DM it? Yeah, I was yeah. going to buy it. 
a year Sorry, ago, I think, and then just learn it. You would have had it. Probably would have taken about a year to learn. M- so you much guys like, it. much like the the sick young girl in the in the hit movie Balto, we'd be lost without you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, letting me play with you guys. Uh, I hope it's going to be as fun as we think it will be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I believe in it. I mean, I'm looking forward to actually playing. Next episode will be character ginning ish but uh after that whoo it's gonna be a roller coaster sure is who knows man it's gonna be dicey uh, i think or red i think it will be uh definitely go check out diceheroes.com um check out uh also geeklyinc.com please where you can find our podcast and many other podcasts including cast of thrones and drunks and dragons and some other things that I can't remember. Sayer and Cthulhu and friends. Jesus. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's another you one. Guys. I know they're only, they're only tangentially a part of our brand, but they are a part of our GD brand. Uh, sure. Uh, so, uh, if you want to if you want to talk to us, we're on Twitter. We're at Geekly Inc. or at D&D Podcast. I'm at Thrifty Nerd. I'm at Tim Lanning. I'm at Jennifer Cheek. I'm at the Mike Bachman. And I'm at Dice Heroes. Woo! Hey! Uh, all right, well, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. Uh, until next week. That was random. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>